society continues to get more narcissistic by the day, selfish, ridiculous, right? And in this case, women are breaking up their relationships, their marriages, boyfriends, whatever, because they they don't like the Barbie movie. This is like some sort of test for them. Like, oh, okay, does the boyfriend like the Barbie movie? If not, none. Okay, maybe not. But all right, let me just dive into the video. Ugh, this, I don't like this timeline. I just don't. Uh, anyway, Pimp Master Yoda says, leave it to women to be in a solid relationship and ruining it overnight because they're BFs didn't like the Barbie movie. So here's an article about it. Not getting the Barbie movie? You've been dumped. Women's ultimatum to partners on the film's feminist message. I just, I have no words. All right, as the feminist movie of the summer, Barbie has broken box office records. But it's also broken hearts on social media with dozens of women saying to their partners, don't you get the Barbie movie? Then you're dumped. This is just narcissistic controlling behavior. I just, the American family film about a doll that comes to life brimming with jokes and glitzy dance numbers has become a benchmark for TikTok users to judge their partner's suitability. These people don't deserve, they don't deserve the boyfriend, a husband, all that. Like, if this is all it's going to take, bro, it's hard. It's hard for anybody right now in this current climate, in this dating climate, to find a good person, a good committed person. It's tough for both sides. Like, I know that the manosphere wants to hate on women. The women's side wants to hate on men. But it's tough for both sides because we live in a society that has promoted promiscuity, pornography, all this kind of stuff, and this self-serving attitude. You know, marriages, relationships, how they are supposed to be is selfless. You can't have a happy relationship if you're selfish and you're only looking out for yourself. Uh, you're supposed to put your partner above yourself and they're supposed to do vice versa. Like, that is... That's what, like, that's a huge part of what love is. And so if you're just only caring about your own self, that ain't love. It's ridiculous. And so people are struggling out here in this dating world because society has become so selfish. People only look out for themselves. They're looking at relationships as transactional things instead of looking for actual love, looking for somebody to love and to be loved in return. It's all selfish. It's all transactional for so many people. It, the hookup culture has run rampant, which is not healthy. Okay. Like I'm a Christian. So obviously I'm against hookup culture, promiscuity, all that kind of stuff. But even people who aren't are waking up to the fact that it is not good. There's no, that it's, it's not beneficial. People are ruining their ability to truly bond with other human beings. And it's also not gratifying. It's just, it's, it's, it's just very selfish. And that's what a lot of the dating game has turned into. Men and women both, they're participating in this. They're only looking out for themselves. They're only using other human beings. They're not looking for something actual, genuine. Um, they're not looking for love. They, it, it's, it's crazy out there. It's why some of us have quit dating. <laughs> I, at this point, I'm hoping God just says, here you go. Boop. Here he is. All right, um, because I don't want out there, I don't want out there trying to date right now in this climate. That's all I know. All right, so let's continue. Um, women are urged to dump men who don't understand the film's messages about feminism and patriarchy. The craze has been fueled by TikTok users insisting that agreeing with the feminist themes in the Barbie movie should be standard in a relationship. Cringe. Okay, one woman even canceled her first date after the man refused to wear pink to see the movie. That's just retarded and that's just controlling. You're going to try to force a dude to wear pink. You shouldn't make someone do something that they're uncomfortable with doing. And I can understand why a guy wouldn't want to wear pink. Some guys are fine with it. And that's cool. I'm not saying that there's this universal standard that guys can never wear pink. Some guys look good in pink. Jason Momoa. <laughs> But if a guy is not comfortable wearing pink and doesn't want to wear pink, 
then you shouldn't be pressuring him to do it. How would you feel this? How would this woman feel if this guy was pressuring her to wear something she wasn't comfortable wearing? Come on, this is common sense. Now, I know that when it comes to, I mean, especially with a first date, like, come on, dude dodged a bullet. But in relationships, there's some give and take. And so I think that some compromises obviously need to be had. Like, say, for example, him just going to watch the Barbie movie in the first place because it's important to her, even if he doesn't want to watch it. Okay, that's a nice compromise, and that's that's the kind of him. But to make him wear pink, to... Come on. All right, she told TikTok that they should make the cinema trip an event by wearing pink outfits and posing for pictures together. A first date dude! She called it off. Why didn't he? Because this is weird. This is awkward. There is no way. I just can't imagine on a first date wanting to match with a guy and wanting to take all these pictures together on a first date. How do you even know? How do you even know? Like this is this is relationship couple stuff. Like this is husband and wife stuff. I mean, or without the pink, or honestly, this description, wearing pink and posing for pictures together, this is gay BFF stuff. <laughs> All right, so he refused to cooperate and she called off the date. Good for him. Her social media admission was met with admiration from other women who said, if his manhood is so fragile that he can't wear pink, if it's important to you for a single night, you need a new man because that's a boy. That's, that's retarded. That's retarded. Uh, it, it, his his manhood is not fragile. A, a, a fragile guy would be bending to every single whim from his woman. Like I said, there's some compromises that need to be had, but to make him wear pink and to make him feel em emasculated, if that's how it would probably make him feel with some guys, that's it. Come on, that's wrong. Uh, others admitted that the movie has shaped how they see their partners. One woman said on TikTok, I feel like, I'm the butthole for letting Barbie movie affect my relationship and the way I see my boyfriend. Friends have told me not to let it change the way I look at my boyfriend because our relationship is very healthy. You know, I keep seeing this kind of stuff everywhere. You see in men hating on women in the manosphere, women hating on men on the feminist side, because like obviously I, I the manosphere is feminism for men. It's the same difference. And what it does is it actually makes people go gay. And I think that's part of the agenda of it because... You know, there is nothing more gay than hating on the opposite gender constantly. That's gay. All right. And if you hate men so much and you hate men for their qualities of masculine qualities, freaking what are you, why are you dating men? <laughs> so stupid. So this reminds me of this video that I just, uh, this is also insufferable. I tweeted about this yesterday because this is Mia Khalifa. She is a corn, an ex corn star. So first of all, you already don't want dating, dating or marriage advice from that. Um, look, I ain't trying to completely judge someone's past. They can change, but I'm judging by what she's already saying. It doesn't seem to be the case here. Uh, and yeah, I don't like dunking on people and just outright hating on people, but this is awful. The fact that she's sending this message to women, it makes me so mad because it's it's awful and don't even just yeah I'll play it here in a minute but let me just give some context first that before she even made this video she this started and this reply happened that she's replying to because she made a stitch video like a collab like you for those who don't use TikTok it'll show the intro of like another video and then you reply to it basically so she showed the intro to another video of this girl talking about unique engagement rings and engagement rings that she thought was pretty. And so then Mia here makes a reply to that and says, oh, only cool girls get divorced before they're 30 or something stupid like that. And all these girls in the replies, yes, yes. And it's like glorifying divorce, which makes me sick to my stomach. It makes me want to barf. Just gross, right? So anyway, let's just... Oh, we're comparing stats. Baby girl doesn't know that I am Tom Brady at this game. Married at 18, divorced at 21. Second marriage, married at 25, divorced at 28. Third engagement, engaged at 29, ended it at 30, but I kept the ring. I'm still keeping Tom Brady on his toes. We should not be afraid to leave these men. We are not stuck with these people. Marriage is not 
a sanctimonious thing. It is it is paperwork. It's something it's 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 a commitment you make to someone. But if you feel like you're not getting anything from that commitment and you're trying, you got to go. You got to go. You have to go. I know it's difficult to fill out paperwork and to make appointments and to do all of these things, but this is your fucking life. Do you want to be stuck with someone? Period. Do you want to be stuck with Oh, oh it just makes me sick to my stomach. When I saw this, it was like I, I wanted to throw up because I have been divorced. It's been three years, right? Oh, it's it's it still makes me sick to even think about it because it was I can't like those who haven't gone through it. I don't know how to describe it, but it's not just paperwork. Even like here, I just, I wrote it out, wrote out my thoughts on this yesterday. It kind of put me, it even kind of put me in a bit of a dark place, just even reflecting on this stuff, uh, because it's, it's a tr very tragic thing to happen. And people just, it's like, why do you even get married then? If you don't respect the union and, and how sacred marriage is, why are you even doing it? It just disgusts me. It disgusts me. Uh, so I said, as a divorcee, I wouldn't say these things. That killed me inside. Dating has terrified me ever since three years later. Marriage is a sacred bond. Even if a divorce is warranted, it is like a death. It's not just paperwork. Don't get married at all if you have no respect for it. I just can't. This current society and all this kind of stuff. You know, it's one thing to tell women or men uh, hey, if you're in a marriage and you're being abused or you're being cheated on, you know, serious things like that, it's okay to get away. You know, it's going to be hard even if you're, you know, it, it's still going to be difficult. It's still going to be a challenge, but you need to be safe and you need to not be used and abused type thing. You know, if you want to send that message, great, but don't be so, uh, you know what, if you're not happy, screw it, just leave. It's just paperwork. It's no big deal. Like, are you a narcissist to even say that? You have to be. You can't have empathy to even think of it like this. Like you just can't be human. You can't have a soul to think like this. It's awful. And they're like, this is the thing about when it comes to marriage and all that kind of stuff and people are just, people's just focus so much on, well, are you happy? Well, are you happy right now? There's times in life when you're married or not that you're going to go through stages where you're not happy. That's just how it is. But when you commit to somebody in a marriage, you work through those times. You're not going to always be happy. Marriage isn't just sun, sun, sunshine and roses every single day. Like my parents, they're still married. You know, that they have a wonderful, beautiful relationship. And I'm very blessed to have parents that, that have been an example of what a marriage is, you know, and what a beautiful marriage is and a God-centered marriage is. And so obviously things aren't always sun, sun, sunshine and roses for them 24 seven, but they love each other more than anything. And they, you know, they're most of the time very happy, but just saying there's going to be hard times that happen. And when you tell people just to quit when it gets tough, what the crap? That's like, even with friendships, even with any type of relationship that you have with somebody that is platonic, you don't just quit on them over the drop of a hat, over the first disagreement, over the first argument, over the first like this, that, or the other. Some of the closest friendships, relationships that we have with people are just think about siblings, for example. Like, dude siblings can just get sometimes we're button heads like crazy man sometimes we're just and then you know you get over it you move on because you love each other it, it's it's you don't just quit on people and that's part of what and and when I think of who loves me more than anybody I think about my family and I think like wow that's actual love to love somebody when you they know all the worst about me. They've seen me at my absolute worst. All my personality flaws. Every time I've acted out of line, this, that, or the other. And they still love me. Like, it's an amazing thing, right? Um, and that's how things should be with marriage as well. Obviously, if abuse is going on, infidelity, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. And you got to leave. 
But even with that, don't act like, oh, it's just paperwork. It's not. It's tragic. It's devastating. Unless you don't have a soul. So, yeah. So I, I'm just, all of this current selfish culture that we're seeing in society just goes against everything that the Bible tells us. It goes against everything that the Bible tells us what love is. It just completely takes away humanity from people. And I don't care who you are. If you live a very selfish life and if you're only making yourself number one, I know that's what society tells us. Put yourself first. Put yourself first. If you're, there are some certain occasions where you have to set a, set boundaries or some occasions where you do kind of have to put yourself first in a specific instance or whatever. But as a whole, people who live selfish lives and they're only putting themselves first and they're only looking out for number one themselves, they're not living as fulfilling of a life as people who can be selfless and who can put others above themselves. I mean, this is this is biblical. Come on. So anyway, there you have it for this video. I just think it's insanity. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Don't forget to read your Bibles today. I'll catch you next time. And in the meantime, go boom.